So apparently your girl went so far right that the right was like, okay, I'll just stay over here then. Even the Latino men were like, listen, I'll just stay with the man I know who hates me. Then this right here. So that's a sense. In terms of healthcare, your girl let it be known she didn't really mean universal healthcare the last time. In terms of international relations, well. As commander in chief, I will ensure America always has the strongest, most lethal fighting force in the world. In terms of international genocide for U.S. corporate interests, she let us know that she is very much pro genocide. Here's her saying essentially those being invaded and massacred since 1967 have actually no right to fight back. I will never forget October 7th, and the world must never forget. Now here she is using the infamous colonizer tactic of divide and rule. I will always work to ensure the safety and security of the Jewish people here and around the world. Notice she makes no mention of the Muslims being kicked off and bombed out of their homeland. In terms of a progressive cabinet, she assured seats for Republicans, who Democrats have been told are the fascist antichrist. You had a lot of Republican speakers at the convention. Will you appoint a Republican to your cabinet? Yes, I would. And proudly boasts strong Republican support. Yay! And here's her saying the majority of Americans actually died during the pandemic. We are in the midst of a public health epidemic that has taken the lives of over 220 million Morning. Americans in just the last several Morning. months. And here's her saying it again. We're looking at over 220 million Americans who just in the last several months died. And yet and still, she is somehow the harbinger of justice for Americans. And if we question that logic, we are anti-black, anti-progress, anti-whatever. Meanwhile, there have been pro-black, anti-genocide candidates who are for our universal health care and human rights. Who we're apparently supposed to be mad at for trying. Is this so adding up yet or apparently dog and pony shows don't work and you might actually have to promise some things to american citizens not just like pander to republicans i don't know and don't look at me i don't vote for genocide the part that gets me is how easy it was to promise nothing but the same old and even worse and people just accepted being pushed to the right expecting everyone else to just follow suit then turn around and blame third party voters for having some god dang sense when we barely made a mark because of the republican and largely democrat run bully media machine imagine if people in bipoc community spread the word that we need politicians who pander to humanity and not to conservative killers but somehow americans think we're exempt from karma and consequence more in american exceptionalism coming up next to see Kamala Harris described her politics as one of joy as she promised the most lethal military in the world, talking about women's rights in America, essentially focusing those rights on, on the right to termination, while the rest of the world has watched women slaughtered in Gaza for 13 months straight. It's very curious to think that they thought a winning strategy was Beyonce and that Taylor Swift was somehow a political winning strategy that was going to defeat who? Trump.